Now, time frame. We've got we're up against a wall, so to speak, with some potentially devastating or catastrophic outcomes from this solar cycle uh, or the cycles that you've mentioned. You mentioned the twelve thousand one, as if in twenty twenty two we find ourselves approaching. Uh, a boundary that um, we would experience the 12,000 year cycle. So talk to me about time frame. Okay. Uh, in case you can't see that Ben's putting his hand up to his nose, <laughs> not because he smells something, but because it's close to the face. So there, there's a very clear and easy answer to this and a tiny caveat, like an asterisk on it. So we see that these accelerations in how fast Earth's magnetic field is moving. We see that these things are happening every couple of years, about every six to seven years. Given the rate that we've seen these things happening, the rate at which things are changing now, sometime between 2035 and 2049, late 2030s or 2040s. That is your best time window. And I wish I could narrow it past a a 15 year block like I just did, 2035 to 2049. If you did, you you might start to look like a kook. Yeah, and on you know, September twenty first, <laughs> yeah, but the fall equinox of twenty thirty eight, you will see X. The caveat to that is we're going to jump back to something you mentioned earlier in eighteen fifty nine during the Carrington event, the last time the sun had anything close to a super flare. Telegraph wires caught fire. They unplugged the machines, and messages were still coming in. For smaller solar storms we get every 11 years, we lose a satellite or transformers or have major large-scale systems go down several times every sunspot cycle. And the thing is, there's only one thing that stops every little hiccup from the sun from doing that. That's Earth's magnetic field. And so what I gave is my best guess for when this solar system shift, when the Earth pole flip and the solar micronova will occur. The problem is, at some point before that, we're going to get to, and if you could consider us, we're down about 20% in the magnetic field. At some point, we're going to be down 40, 50, 60%. Every time we drop a little bit, it takes a little less from the sun to erase our electrical way of life and throw us back into the Stone Age. Something like the 1859 Carrington event, if that were to happen when we were down 50% in the magnetic field, coins could melt in your pocket. We're talking there is no more electricity on this planet for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. There's no more civilization. So... So even before the big one came or the big ones yes. came, you've you've got a, a situation in society where people are simply striving with yeah. everything they've got to uh, provide the basic necessities of their life. And luckily at this point, the earth hasn't turned over yet, but the weather's getting weirder. The animals are getting mm. weirder. We are getting weirder. And as the this lock picker, gets to work, there'll be more volcanoes and more earthquakes. And so long before, it's not like we go hunky-dory skipping hand in hand until 2042 or whatever, when all of a sudden the sun micronovas and the earth flips over. Nobody is going to arrive at that day without thinking earth is in big trouble and has been for a long time. It is, in fact, my prediction. When the sun? Yeah. Yeah. My, yeah, sorry, I cut you off at a critical point. <laughs> I was going to say, it is my prediction that we will lose global power before the solar micronova and pole reversal, simply because when Earth's magnetic field dips to a certain point, we can't avoid solar flares forever. Um, even even small hiccups in the solar wind will be, which is, would be the, the particle stream coming out from the sun. Things we take on a weekly basis now could literally take down continental power grids or the whole world. And that's that's really what what we're looking at as early as any day now. Earth's magnetic field mm-hmm. being down 20% is already a big deal. Um, we are approaching the peak of that 11-year cycle. We're not quite there yet, but when we hit that peak, we're going to have a couple of years of increased risk. I'd probably put us at about a one in five chance of 
losing the global grids this 11-year cycle, which would be over the next three to four years, maybe next week if we get really unlucky. But then, of course, after that, 11 years later, you know, which should be sometime in the 2030s, what if we're down 40% in the magnetic field or 50%? I'd struggle to see us getting through that 11-year cycle without something major happening. Now, of course, that could be 2034, and then in 2035, the sun could micronova and the earth flips over. So it's almost like we wouldn't have that long. But it's also possible that we're going to get whacked next week and that the solar micronova and earth turning over is still 20 years away. And what do you do when you're thrown back into the Stone Age? Yeah, well, what do you do? And that's, uh, I'd like to yes, end the, the podcast here black. with that question. Yes, the, yeah, sun, the sun turns, turns black. black. For how long? I would guess about three days. But um, there's really no way. We, why? Because we've got records of that? Yeah, because we've got records of it. And to be honest, Christians, I am with you. We have the same answer. The Egyptian records of this are better than ours. Just take the lick. They're better than, they, they did a better job recording this than we did. Anyway, um, yes, absolutely. But it's going to happen because coming with this thing in the galaxy, it's basically an electromagnetic wave. We call it the electric current sheet. And for the same reason that a Swiffer duster swept all around your home is going to have a whole bunch of dust on it at the end of it, this electric sheet is full of dust. The kind of dust that would get attracted to an electromagnetic thing like the sun. And so at the same time as this electric current sheet is delivering an electromagnetic punch to the sun, we are going to dump dust and other material onto it. And in fact, we are already noticing the dust increasing in the inner solar system and in the uppermost atmosphere of the sun, which they call corona. The corona shockingly enough. And so the dust is already arriving. The magnetic punch already hit Pluto and Neptune. But what happens is we're dumping this dust on the sun over the next several years to a decade or two, and then the sun takes the magnetic punch. Right. All of a sudden, right. you've got... Then we get a punch. Then we get a punch back from the sun. Um, and of course, you know, I, I wish I had a better time frame from that, but I kind of, yep. I kind of think you well, might be right. If I, if I was to try to, pick you can't it, do all things, huh? Yeah. Um, 